Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Clover Health stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or sell. Clover Health sells Medicare-backed insurance plans and uses its platform to collect and analyze health data. The company is headquartered in Franklin, Tennessee and was founded in 2014. It went public via SPAC this year and can be found on the NASDAQ and Deutsche Börse. Initially, the SPAC is a shell of a company. This has been a popular way to fast track the traditional IPO process, which can be a long and expensive process. In the US healthcare system, data is not easily available and there is a lot of waste in the process. The company's platform is called Clover Assistant and it aggregates data to help healthcare providers make better decisions that not only save money, but help improve the lives of their patients. Every year since 1970, Americans spend more and more money on health care. 28% of Americans have two or more chronic conditions, which is more than most developed countries. We also spend a lot of money on administrative costs. Clover plans to improve all of this. They have already proven this since its members have fewer hospital visits and fewer ER visits. That leads to a major cost savings for everyone. They did get their start in Medicare Advantage, which is a huge industry, currently $270 billion, and expected to grow to $590 billion. And this company is the fastest growing Medicare Advantage plan in the US. They plan to roll Clover Assistant out to the entire $3.65 trillion healthcare industry. Today, the Senate suggested a $3.5 trillion plan to invest in healthcare, climate change, and more. This news will help boost stocks like this in the short run. Just this week, the stock was downgraded to underweight from neutral by a JP Morgan analyst after Clover lowered most of its metrics. The analyst also cut her price target to $9 from $15. She thinks shares of other managed healthcare companies offer a more balanced risk reward profile. Bank of America analyst Kevin Fishbeck cut his rating on Clover Health last month to underperform from neutral saying the health insurance stock's valuation was no longer supported by fundamentals. Fishbeck cited the company's mixed first quarter earnings, which showed revenue rising 21% to $200 million, but its medical loss ratio, the percentage of premiums spent on claims and expenses, jumping to 108%. I'm gonna show you the actual numbers when we look at the company's income statement. Last month, Clover Health surged after meme stock investors rallied around the company. It ranks fourth on most talked about on Wall Street bets. Over 11.5% of the activity on WSB is about Clover. It is number one in short interest according to InvestorPlace.com. It has a 37% short interest. Just to give you some negative news, the company was under investigation by the Department of Justice for kickbacks and other activities. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 3.6 billion market cap. They're trading at $9 a share and they have 408 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see in the first quarter of this year, they had negative $93 million of free cash flow. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's also negative each year. Revenue is the sales for the company. In the fourth quarter is 166 million, then it grew to 200 million in the first quarter. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Below that is their operating expenses, and their operating expenses are higher than their revenue, so they have negative operating income each year. And the main reason is, is the high amount of insurance claims. Their insurance claims are more than their revenue each quarter. Obviously in the long term, a company like this can't pay out more in claims than it brings in in revenue because it's losing money right there, plus it has other expenses. I imagine as they get more customers and more premiums, this will level out. This is definitely something you want to keep an eye on. And this was the main reason it got downgraded by the Bank of America analyst. They pay out 15 million of interest on their debt. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which of course is negative every year. This is the company statement of cash flows. Yahoo Finance only had the first quarter of the statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit or loss. It's not actual cash. So they leak 93 million of cash flow in the first quarter. 
and they don't have much in capital expenditures because most of the expenses used to grow the business are from research and development. They don't need to buy factories or expensive equipment, just computers. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow, which of course is negative in the first quarter. This is the equity section of the company's balance sheet, and you can see they have about $600 million of equity. They raised $1.7 billion from their IPO and other capital raises. And the company has lost about $1.1 billion since they started. The retained earnings is a sum of all the company's prior net incomes. If the retained earnings numbers has a negative balance that gets close to the additional paid in capital's positive balance, that's a sign the company may go into bankruptcy. I wouldn't worry about that too much because in the beginning you do lose a lot of money and then they could just keep raising capital so they can raise this number and do another capital raise and get more cash. As long as people are investing in the stock, even if they're losing money, they can still raise capital because there's investor interest. But if the stock price gets pushed down further, people start selling, then it's going to be a lot harder to raise capital. Let's look at the capital structure. They have 585 million of equity, 56 million of debt. So they're 91% equity, 9% debt. And you can see they have a lot of cash on their balance sheet since their net debt is negative 629 million. Their WAC is 11.16% and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that's 5.3 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $3.6 billion. We divide that by 408 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of 891. It was really hard to value this company. It could have went in a lot of directions. I just showed you how much free cash flow they would need to generate in 2024 to justify an $8.91 stock price. Most companies convert about 10% of their revenue into free cash flow. So that means in 2024, they would have 4.5 billion of revenue and convert 450 million into free cash flow. Do you think they can get 4.5 billion of revenue by 2024? If you do, then the stock price is currently trading at the right number. But I do understand a lot of people aren't investing in this company for its fundamentals. They're investing in the possible short squeeze, the momentum of the stock. So some people are just looking to make a quick buck and get out. But if you are bullish on this stock, then I just suggest a buy and hold long term. Simply Wall Street thinks the stock is worth $2.51. They're saying it's very overvalued. Four analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $9.50. This is where the stock has been trading since June 2020. It was pretty flat for a while because it wasn't a company yet. It was just a SPAC. But when they announced they were going to acquire this company, the stock price shot up. It came back down, way down. And then the Reddit community and the Wall Street Bets community really pushed the stock price higher, over $20 a share. But usually when a stock price gets pushed up really quickly, it comes down really quickly, which it did. It pretty much came down to where it was before the pump. This is a really liquid stock. 40 to 60 million shares are traded each day. 95% of the shares are held by institutions. So institutions are really bullish on this stock. Generally, if a lot of institutions own a stock, that's usually a good sign. And according to Yahoo Finance, 9% of the shares are shorted. But this could be an old number because the number we looked at earlier was as of today. The stock has gone down 19% since it started trading while the S&P 500 is up 35%. The 52 week low was 631, the high was 29. And the stock is trading below its 50 day and 200 day moving average. Analysts are bullish on this stock, projecting their earnings to grow 29%, their revenue to grow 21%. If you invested $10,000 when this company started trading as a SPAC, you'd be at $8,700 today. That's a 13% loss. The founder and CEO of the company, Vivek Garapali, owns 20% of the stock. Then Green Oaks, Vanguard, SCH Sponsor, and the president of the company owns 3%. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE because they have negative net income. Their price to sales is a bit high. But when a company has a high price to sales ratio, that indicates investors think the company's in growth mode. They have a pretty good price to book ratio because they have so much cash on their balance sheet. They have a high current ratio, 4.7. They have nearly 700 million of cash, mainly from their IPO. They had negative $93 million of free cash flow in the first quarter and over $600 million of working capital. So they should be able to get through the next year or two without needing to take on any more debt or raise more capital. It would be good for investors if they could become profitable before they go through all the cash on their balance sheet. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos on Anthem, Cigna, CVS, and United Healthcare. All in the same industry as Clover. And if Clover has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So they're only better in current ratio and debt. And they're a really small company, 3.6 billion market cap. 
Cigna is the smallest of the four and their market cap is 80 billion. To summarize, this company sounds like it has great potential, but it's a really difficult market. There's some massive companies that have been around for many, many decades. Everything they have sounds great and it sounds like they're gonna change the world, but a lot of companies seem this way. It's harder to execute those plans than just say them. But if they could execute some of the things they talked about and become profitable, they have a really good chance of making a lot of money. But if they can't get the profitability, that's a big concern. I rank their free cash flow as one out of 10, their revenue five out of 10, and their ratio is one out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.